Welcome back everyone. Today we're making an X-ray high voltage DC power supply. So in some upcoming videos, we're gonna be messing around with X-rays a lot, making CAT scanners, X-ray machines, all kinds of crazy fun stuff. But to do all this fun stuff, we need to generate X-rays. And luckily for us, X-ray machines are extremely simple. All you really need is an X-ray tube and a high voltage DC power supply. Now I could go out and just buy a high voltage DC power supply, but those can get expensive very quickly. And well, it's more fun to build one ourselves. So let's get into it. The requirements for this power supply is roughly around 80,000 volts of DC at around five milliamps of current. So because of these design requirements, I chose a flyback transformer voltage multiplier type design. This design will easily allow us to reach 80,000 volts at a low amperage, but these can be even pushed up to hundreds of thousands of volts, like shown here. This is roughly about 150,000 volts I pushed on one of these multipliers. Yeah, that is some crazy long arc, some crazy long arc. Okay, so let's actually build it. So here's a schematic of our power supply. It first starts off with a 24 volt 75 VA transformer. This then goes into a 10 amp full bridge rectifier. This now DC current runs into a ZVS driver. This stands for zero voltage switching driver. This essentially just converts the DC into a high frequency output. This then feeds into a DIY flyback transformer. And this will initially step the voltage up to roughly around 20 to 30,000 volts at a high frequency. But we can't just use this because we need DC, not AC. So after the flyback transformer, this then feeds into a voltage multiplier. Now this will convert it to a DC current, but it also multiplies the voltage. So there's different stages and each stage will double the initial peak voltage. I first assembled the 75 VA transformer, the full bridge rectifier, the ZVS driver, and the flyback transformer according to the schematic. Now let's go ahead and give this circuit some test arcs. Well, to make sure we don't fuck up anything, I'm gonna go and place both of these components into oil. The oil is a very strong dielectric, so just keep the flyback transformer from arcing to itself or possibly arcing and destroying our ZVS driver. Yes, the oil is fairly dirty and it is pretty gross, but it will still work. As you can see, those are some pretty meaty nice arcs. We're probably already looking around 20, 30,000 volts there. Wow, that is some nice arcs. Oh crap, it's arcing to something else. <laughs> you might be able to see the smoke there. It started arcing to my... Oh god. So that's great. The initial circuit is working great. Okay, so let's finish off the circuit now with the voltage multiplier. Now for the voltage multiplier, I went ahead and soldered together a bunch of 20 kV 10 nanofarad capacitors and 20 kV diodes in this truss type pattern. Here's our finished voltage multiplier circuit and this should multiply our voltage by six times. So we should get some incredible output voltage with this thing. So let's go ahead and wire it up now. Now this voltage multiplier has six sections in total, which means we should get six times our initial voltage, which will put us at roughly around 120 to 180,000 volts. Now we don't need this high of a voltage, but like, come on, I had to. I, I just had to do it. I wanted to see what crazy arcs we could get with it. Okay, now that I got it all wired up, um, a little bit of chaos of wires here. Time to do what we did the first time and add some more oil on top of our voltage multiplier. Make sure we don't get any arcs anywhere. And while giving it a test, holy hell, those are some crazy arcs. You can just feel the voltage in the air when that thing is running. Like you can feel your hair just start sticking up on its ends. It is crazy scary. Okay, enough playtime. Sadly, I gotta turn down the voltage to what our x-ray tube needs. Well, I never actually had to step it down. I wired a new primary on the flyback transformer and the voltage just dropped to like 80,000 volts. I have no idea. Maybe it's something to do with the resonant frequency, the ZVS driver, something like that. I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm, I'm so far from it. So someone in the comments knows, you know, go tell me, please. I mean, but hey, I'm not mad. It, it did the work for me. So here I got these two one inch steel spheres and this is what we'll be using to kind of measure our high voltage. Won't be very accurate because um, 
Well, I'm not under standard conditions. So we do know the voltage breakdown of air is roughly three kilovolts per millimeter. So every millimeter this arc jumps, we can assume that that is three kV. Now, because it is more humid and things like pressure and all that can affect your arc length and the dielectric strength of air. So we are just going to take this as kind of an estimate. But at the moment, we are hovering around 30 millimeters for our distance between these two spheres. So jumping this gap should give us roughly 90,000 volts. Because it's humid out, we'll drop that down to around, probably around 80,000 volts. So somewhere around there, it's not too accurate, but it'll give us a good estimation. Let's turn it on and see how well it jumps this gap. So as you can see, we get a clear breakdown of the air at this voltage. So yeah, we can assume around 90,000 volts. And another really cool thing is to watch this oil under the high voltage and see all the oil flowing. Get some really cool effects. Now it's time to pack up all this stuff into this power supply box that I have. And I'm also going to be adding some relay controls and stuff. This will be for future Arduino controlling this power supply. And I'm also going to be adding a filament supply for the x-ray tube. Since this is going to be an x-ray power supply. So I'm going to go ahead and combine all this stuff up and throw her in. Okay, so now we got the first layer of all of our electronics. These are all just control things. This is the filament supply here. Some potentiometers to control it. We have a little transformer down here to control this relay. This relay then taps into here so I can control this remotely using an Arduino. That'll be for future. Um, a buck converter that just powers an LED and stuff on the back. And yeah, so now all we gotta do is place our voltage multiplier on top of all this stuff. Okay, so our multiplier is all wired up now. Time to put the lid on and fill her with wax. Okay, so the power supply is now done and she is a pure beauty. So here we got the two filament controls. These are just for um, the x-ray tube that I have needs a filament. So this supplies adjustable voltage and current, which is controlled by these two potentiometers back in here. Um, you can't really see it, you just gotta use a screwdriver to access it. Here I have this connection, which controls an internal relay. So I can control this via Arduino to turn on and off the power supply. And then right here I have the on and off switch. Right here I have a green LED that just tells them the power supply is on and active. And then right here we have two high voltage outputs and a milliamp meter. As you can see, it does look like it's off a little bit. Um, probably we'll have to readjust that, but we can use that as our baseline at the moment. And let's go ahead and show you guys the arcs this thing makes and let's play around with it a bit. So here I got the high voltage wired up and I got about a one inch spark gap set up over here. And let me tell you, this thing makes some scary arcs. Let's turn her on. Now watch what happens when we add some sand and bring our beads together. It gives this really cool effect. And as you can see, the sand arranges itself in these weird patterns. And that's just the sand arranging itself to the strong electric fields because the sand picks up charge and then those charges align to the electric field. So it's a great visible representation of electric field lines. And then the second thing I wanted to try was an electrostatic motor. And this is just a motor that runs on high voltage DC. I made it using some wires, a Coke can and a ping pong ball, really simple. This electrostatic motor works by the aluminum foil and the ping pong ball picking up a charge from the high voltage. This is then attracted to the opposite polarity and then it gains another charge there and then the cycle just continues creating a functional motor. So it's really simple, but it's just a cool little toy to have.
maybe in the future I'll 3D print something and make a really nice kind of setup and then uh, create a little electrostatic motor that just continuously runs. It'd be a really cool kind of display piece. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and stay tuned for all the x-ray projects because I got some really awesome stuff coming up. See ya.